Hi everyone. Um, today we're going to start a new series, mainly focusing on filter components design and how to design an effective RF filter or EMI filter. Okay. So we start from the very basics, and today we're only looking at capacitor, and, and we're only looking at one aspect of a capacitor today, which is what we call voltage coefficient. And it is very common with a multi-layer ceramic capacitors, as you can see here. So here you can see I have a selection of multi-layer ceramic capacitors, MLCC. And you know, generally when we design things, if you've got enough experience, often you just pick a capacitor from the voltage rating and a capacitance value, and then you, they use it, right? But what you notice is that these capacitors all have different sizes, and also they have different dielectric materials. So for example, MP0, X7R, X5R. And I'm just going to show today that between two different dielectric materials, the voltage coefficient uh, of a capacitor is actually very important. So let's start with, uh, let's say, this one. So because this is rated as 50 volts, one microfarad capacitor. And we're going to test the impedance and capacitance of this capacitor. OK. OK. So I can go to Red Experts from Worth Electronics, or you can go to some other capacitor companies um, like Murata, TDK, and uh, Kimit, all sorts. They all have very similar. Um, online tools here. So yeah, so the capacitor we're using in this case, you can see, is a X7R dielectric material, 1812 size, right? One microfarad rated up to 50 volts. Okay, so this is the impedance against frequency curve. So there is a resonance frequency sits at about 5 megahertz, indicating the effective range really perhaps is from 100 kilohertz to 5 megahertz, because after 5 megahertz, this is the inductance of the capacitor, the ESL, start to dominate. So this is what we call the inductance range of a capacitor. Therefore, the, the rule is always try to use the capacitance sort of in this frequency range. Okay, if you look at ESR, this is the ESR equivalent series resistance against frequency. What I wanted to show you actually is here, right? This is the DC bias voltage, meaning that if you apply zero volts DC on the capacitor, so just doing the radio frequency frequency sweep, your capacitance really is like as it is stated in the data sheet. However, as you start applying DC voltage across this capacitor, and in real application we do, right? Because this capacitor will be used for perhaps for 5 volts rail, 12 volts rail, even 24 volts rail. So that means you've got to have some voltage applied on this capacitor. This does mean, so for example, if we look at 24 volts, that means the capacitance drops by 7%, 7%, okay? Um, up to 45 volts, you can see 20% capacitance drop, 20% capacitance drop. So that's pretty uh, significant. But if you think this is significant, let's have a look. As I mentioned, this is only X7R material, X7R material. Show you this curve, right, which is the typical capacitance change versus DC voltage. This again is from Worth Electronics. You can see that this is the X7R material, right? And what is even worse is the X5R material. You can see that. And of course, the, the worst is Y5V material. So if we have a look at X5R, that is actually worse, OK? So let's have a look um, in our test setup to see if we can see these impacts, right? Because if, if you look at um, uh, X5R material, then once the voltage is approaching 20 volts over 25 volts rated capacitance, it's almost half or even worse uh, uh, of the capacitance is reduced. So let's have a look. OK, so now this is the test setup. As we explained before in the previous video, this really measures the impedance of a component, passive component. You can see, actually, this is a small uh, test adapter I made to measure the capacitance. This is the capacitance, this is the one microfarad capacitor 
that we are going to measure. Okay, so I can um, uh, connect to the test uh, adapter, and before we make uh, this measurement, we already did a short the open and load calibration at this RF reference port, which is very important. Okay, so we already explained that in the previous episode. So now we connect it to this, and as you can see, this basically measures the impedance against the frequency of this capacitor. So we start from 100 kilohertz and we stop at 1 gigahertz because this uh, this machine can only start from 100 kilohertz, which is a shame because I wanted to see the uh, impedance at a very low uh, frequency range. But you know, for this one, we we can we can we're okay with it. Um, so. First thing is, you can see the resonance frequency, as I pointed here, is about 5 and 6 megahertz, so pretty pretty similar to the uh, data sheets, right, as, as we showed you earlier on. And if I moved this um, uh, cursor to, say, uh, 1 gigahertz region, then it gives me about 2 or 3 ohms, also quite similar to what we got from the uh, data sheet online. That is pretty good. That is pretty good. Okay. Uh, you also notice that in this particular setup, I have a DC source input here, right? And you can see with this impedance test adapter, I can apply up to 40 volts DC on the capacitor. So let's apply some DC to see the difference. You can see here currently we don't uh, have any DC bias voltage on this capacitor. I'm going to switch on the um, power supply so you will see the voltage build up. Let's just monitor the voltage and look at the impedance curve first. Okay, so we start to apply 20 volts DC first. Okay, so 20 volts measured uh, on this port, DC port, and you can see the impedance curve is pretty similar, right? Because the green is um, previous results and yellow is, is the current result at 20 volts DC bias. Now let's increase it to 40, because this one is rated at 50, right? And then let's have a look at 40. Okay, so now you can see I have 42 volts applied. And check this out. You see the whole impedance curve starts shifting up, referring to the yellow trace here. Okay, so that means the impedance actually increase, okay? Indicating a drop in capacitance value. Here in the inductive region of a of a capacitor where you know the e equivalent series inductance dominates actually the, the shape doesn't change which makes sense right because the DC bias voltage should only affect the capacitance the ESL stays the same well this is not the best view to look at this let's go to another view yes here so for example I select a capacitance now you see this indicates the capacitance value so now if I using a marker and then just look at um, you know for example at one megahertz rather than have close to one microfarad capacitance I only got 470 uh, 450 nanofarad capacitance of this one okay so this that's definitely indicating a drop uh, in the capacitance value so this is good we can also look at the series inductance. What is this? Yeah, so you can see this is actually this machine is pretty good. Once it shows you the, you know, series inductance, it shows you the, only the right uh, side of the curve, and you can see as we explained, the inductance actually doesn't change. It's really the vo the capacitance on this this um, uh, capacitor dropped as we increase the voltage level. Okay. So you can see now we swap the capacitor. So now the capacitor is the 2.2 microfarads, but it's a different dielectric material, okay? Different dielectric material. So you can see the difference in the impedance um, against frequency curve. The green was the previous capacitor. Yellow is the new capacitor. So let me just save this for now. So go to display, data to memory, okay? So now we save this. And we're going to apply some voltage. Yeah, so let's go straight to the uh, capacitance measurement. So I applied 10 volts, okay? So the capacitance value showing here, let me have a look, scale, auto scale, yeah. It doesn't change much as similar, similar, 10 volts doesn't change much, but now let's apply 
to 20 volts. Okay, so 20 volts, you can see again, the capacitance dropped about to one microfarad. So, you know, that's again, 50% of, uh, of the capacitance drop because of the uh, bias voltage. Obviously, this one is uh, rated for 25 volts, therefore I'm not going to increase the voltage uh, further. But you can see um, it's about 50% uh, because this is a 2.2 microfarad and this is 1.1 microfarad. And it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, half of the capacitance when you apply a DC bias voltage. So that's important, okay? Uh, hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, we'll see you again.